The latest book on the rapture of the church is really something special to behold, from its very hip cover to its highly imaginative chapter titles. Stay tuned for an interview with the remarkable author. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. My colleague Nathan Jones and I have a special guest in the studio with us today. He's Terry James, a prolific writer about Bible prophecy and the author of a most unusual new book about the rapture. Terry, welcome to Christ in Prophecy. Well, thank you so much, Dave. It's such a pleasure to be here with you, and I appreciate the invitation. Well, you're mighty, uh, we're the ones that are blessed to have you down here from Arkansas. You know you're now in God's country here in Texas. Oh, well, that's what I've heard, but you know, I'm an old Razorback. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we'll we'll excuse you for that. Forgive you for it, okay? Uh, Terry, I am intrigued by the cover of your new book, Rapture Ready or Not. It is most unusual. I wish you could see it. Um, It... uh, is something that I think just really grabs people. And I would like to know uh, where the idea for it come from. Well, you know, David, it is interesting because um, the Lord gave me these titles and I think um, you will att- your reading them will attest to the fact they're unusual titles. And I, I did, it's not, not like me to, um, to come up with those kind of titles for this book. But uh, I kind of got an inkling that the Lord was up to something because the publisher uh, came up with this cover, and he didn't give me much of a choice. He said, Terry, this is the cover we want to use. And I had it explained to him, and I'm blind, as you know, and, um, and by my, uh, my little daughter, close uh, editor, and so forth. And, and uh, she explained it to me, and it's this millennial looking guy with earrings and everything. Yeah, got the beard, very yeah. millennial beard. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, I, and I thought to myself, uh, well, I've never heard of a prophecy book like this, but then it struck me. Well, this, this is what I want you to do. I think the Lord told me in my spirit. And uh, so, uh, I think we're looking at a younger generation. We want to at least uh, get their attention. And, and the publisher thought that, that um, they would be attracted by such a cover. And, and if we get them started reading on Bible prophecy, it's very important. I well, think, I think that's generation. right. And in fact, he looks like he has a chip on his shoulder, yeah, that's which what a lot of millennials do. Well, Terry, as you mentioned, you're blind, and I am just fascinated by the fact that you are able to produce so many books. Do you have special uh, uh, tools that you use to help you? Well, I do. I have the JAWS program. It's Jobs Accessible Word System. That's the acronym, JAWS. And uh, it, so we're not it, talking uh, about sharks here. Uh, no, no, not exactly. <laughs> Although my wife gets mad enough sometimes when that thing's going in there that she <laughs> she thinks I've got something going with a shark or something. <laughs> but uh, no, it, it's a, it's a voice synthesis. It plays back every letter, every word, every sentence, paragraph, and so forth, and it becomes second nature to you. Have Actually, you always been blind? Uh, no, I haven't. I, I could see very well until I was 50 years old, actually. And, and uh, I started manifesting the disease, which is retinitis pigmentosa. It's a um, degenerative retinal hereditary disease. And uh, I could see relatively, relatively well with central vision until I was about 50. Huh. And then I got in my central vision. And uh, so um, since that time, I was in public relations and advertising at the time. And God turned my whole life around and uh, got me to writing books. Well, I praise God the way He's using you today. In just a moment, we're going to take a break and we'll come back and talk about the content of this book. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy and our interview with Terry James, the author of a new book about the rapture called Rapture Ready or Not. Terry, you've got a very imaginative title, Rapture Ready or Not, but the subtitle says, and it goes around this guy's uh, shoulder here, 15 reasons this is the generation that will be left behind. It's very definitive. Why do you think this is the season of the Lord's return? Well, I think it is, Nathan, because, um, you know, Jesus said, when you see all of these things beginning to come to pass and look up and lift up your head, for your redemption draweth near, and that's from Luke 21, 28. Certainly, I believe we've more than begun to see these things coming to pass. 
uh, from, from, and we, we talk about the term quite often. Matter of fact, I've heard it mentioned on Christ and Prophecy, mm -hmm. the, the term convergence. All of these things converging, all of these signals that Jesus and the prophets gave for this end time generation, I believe, are upon us. So all the so, signs of the times are converging together instead of being I, separate? I think so, and I think okay. that, that in itself constitutes a major sign that they're all coming together. Well, in that regard, um, I wrote a book about the signs of the times a couple of years ago, and I uh, sent out questions to 22 Bible prophecy uh, experts and asked them to respond. And I asked them, what do they consider to be the most important sign of the end times? And I expected all of them to say Israel, mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't. They said convergence, yeah. convergence, convergence over and over again. Well, speaking of the different signs of the times, let me go through each of your very uh, cleverly named chapters. you got 15 of them. And if you could tell me either a little about them or just identify the sign that you say is there, and then we'll talk about the, uh, how they try. converge <laughs> into to one super sign. Okay, right. uh, this is really great. The end isn't near, it's here. What is sign that does that refer to? Well, I think uh, it mainly, again, it's convergence. It's all of the things we see coming together, but... I think the, the primary thing that struck me immediately was the fact that I was getting such hate email hmm. from people, not only you know, from the lost, I mean, not, not as nearly as many from the lost as uh, confessing or professing uh, Christian. Yes. And, and they were denying the rapture and saying all these things are uh, just a bunch of, uh, you know, hooey. And uh, we should be uh, looking for Antichrist or the New World Order or something rather than for Jesus Christ. The word I wrote down to sum up that chapter was scoffers. Scoffers, yes. In the end time, scoffers would come. Yep, scoffers, exactly. Well, chapter two is UFO sightings and other strange stuff. <laughs> UFO sightings and other strange stuff. That was another one that came to me. And there, are, we have to admit, there have been a lot of strange stuff we've seen going on. And we've been confronted with this, these flying saucers and so forth, the stories of them for years and years and years. Well, I think that, to cut to the chase, I think that that points to a time in the future when uh, there's going to have to be an explanation for the rapture of the church. I really believe that UFOs and so forth will play a part in that uh, as part of the harmonic convergence or the uh, whatever you want to call it. Great delusion. It. Yeah, yeah, all of this kind of thing. I think grand delusion. And I think that's what it is. I think 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and the great delusion is going to be sent for unbelievers. And is that why chapter 3, Planet Earth Needs a Shrink? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, again, in Luke, I think yeah. great nations will be in great distress with perplexity. Certainly we see that no matter which way we look. Whether we're talking about economy or even this election, I've never seen such a, a distress and, and perplexity and anxieties over just uh, the election we've been talking about uh, in, in 2016. Amen. So, uh, so uh, I think that all of these things, again, are coming together and uh, people are distressed. And uh, this is a mild, this is uh, before the tribulation. This was getting for the tribulation era. And, uh, you know, so we're seeing things uh, uh, mm -hmm. that are developing now that are really going to be uh, pumped up during the tribulation era itself. Excellent chapter. I liked this chapter four. Big Brother for a Not So Brave New World. What's that's the right. sign of the time that that chapter is about? Well, of course, that's the technologies that's developed that I think are developing for the Antichrist system that's going to come about. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, George Orwell wrote uh, the Big Brother portion, 1984, the book 1984, the novel. And Aldous Huxley did in 1932, um, A Brave New World. And I think we're seeing the two kind of combined in our time. I think we're seeing these things come together technologically. And, and as Daniel uh, chapter 12 says, you know, we see all of these... Uh, these things developing, great increase in knowledge and other things. and uh, Certainly an age of surveillance. Well, that's it? something I like to emphasize in my teaching about Bible prophecy is the fact that there are many, many Bible prophecies about the end times that cannot be understood apart from modern technology. Right. Like the two bodies of the witnesses lying in the streets of Jerusalem and the whole world looking upon them. Well, how, how can the whole world look upon them? Nobody understood that until the 1960s when we had satellite television. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, what about this uh, new trend, Chapter 5? Vampires, zombies, transhumans, and other fiends. This word transhuman is getting more and more popular. Well, you know, I think uh, the, the scripture that came to mind there that, that inspired this uh, chapter title, I think, in Genesis Chapter 6, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, their minds were only on evil continually. Yes, yes. And certainly, even from my time as a child, and Dave, yours too, probably, uh, you know, remember... Um, 
Dr Dracula and yes. Frankenstein and all those movies at the theaters that were so popular. I loved them, I have to tell you. And my mom wouldn't let me go see them. Either, but, <laughs> I, but I liked them. And, uh, and uh, so I think that from that time, and even before, you know, when, when uh, Bram Stoker wrote Dracula and uh, Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein and so forth, from those times to the, this time, we progressed into a time that um, the mind, you know, we had the Blair Witch Project. All of these things that have come out, and it's got our young people's minds particularly uh, fascinated. And so I think that's what this chapter was. And be. a big shift has occurred in, in whereas we looked upon those as bad things and horrible things, today they're often portrayed as good. That's yeah. right. Well, chapter six, the ravenous bear and other prophesied wild beasts. Of course. <laughs> I assume the, you mean <laughs> Russia, right? Right, right. You know, the, yeah. the Bible speaks, and you know, Bible prophecy, Daniel in particular, and even John talks about these wild beasts. Uh, Talks about the uh, the bear and, and the lion, the, the leopard with wings, and all of these things, and a composite beast that comes out of by the sea of humanity, and uh, and so forth. So and they all represent empires and countries. Yeah, and, and it's the final empire, a composite of I think of uh, uh, the four major empires of the world. So Babylon, and Greece, Medo-Persia, Medo and the Roman Empire Roman combined Empire, to yeah, the revived and, and Roman we, Empire. We even see the two legs, Constantinople, mm -hmm. and, and of course Rome. And so, uh, now we're down to, I think we're down to the, don't you Dave, down to the 10 feet maybe. Yeah. I mean, so, 10 so what you're mm -hmm. saying is that the Bible prophesies that in the end times there's going to be a certain configuration of world politics that's going to come together. That's right. And I think that that's the wild beast I'm talking about. And that's what, how the Bible prophets says, phrases it. And I, I believe that. So all the nations are lined up in their end time order. Mm -hmm. And then you've got uh, chapter 7, recall of history's most deadly product. What is history's most deadly product? I base that upon, uh, you know, they shall cry peace and safety. Well, what is a number one worry? And because it centers around Jerusalem, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's where they fear that um, that World War III is going to ignite, probably more than any other place. And nuclear weapons. That's is, the most deadly recall. problem. Yeah, then. I think okay. so. And uh, that's what, what I base that upon. Fantastic. Chapter 8. Want to Chapter see 8 some? gets a little racy. Yeah. <laughs> Want to see some they nasty like end one. time pictures? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that was, the actual title. Want to see some <laughs> nasty end yeah, time yeah, pictures. Yeah. Yeah. There's no pictures in, in the chapter, <laughs> by the way. Just, no pictures, but uh, I hope I painted, painted some, uh, yes, you some did. mental pictures of what will be going on, <laughs> what, what is going on now to some extent. And that's Paul's perilous time of Second, uh, second, uh, uh, second, uh, second Timothy, Chapter 3. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I went through some of those signals. I think probably the most profound is they will be without natural affection. That's the one that, and, and also they'll have a uh, they'll have a form of godliness, you know, but be without the power thereof. But uh, in particular on this particular one, I think uh, uh, they will be without natural affection. Well, we see that right now. I believe the two key things in being without natural affection. Uh, affection uh, indicates, um, in my view at least, uh, abortion. Yes. yes. The most natural thing in the world for a mother to protect her child yes. in the womb. And the second thing is the homosexuality. Yes. That's not natural. That's without natural affection. Exactly, exactly. Well, then you've got, after we've got the end time pictures, chapter 9, yes, they're the great pretenders. Who are the great pretenders? Well, I think we've got a lot of those, but what bothered me most, I think, is in the church. Um, uh, Jesus said there would be great deception, deceivers and great deception. Yes. Uh, Paul said that, you know, that uh, they would um, they would sh seek sugar water more than meat and in and, um, and the pews and so forth. And so you're not talking about the cults, you're actually talking about legitimate churches whose pastors are well, teaching the Bible. Well, he does get Bible. into cults there. Though. I get yeah. into cults and mm -hmm. pretty heavily there. I, I do a lot of research on yeah, the cults yeah, it's and great so great information. But what bothers me most uh, there, I think, is, is, um, is so-called Christian churches who simply want to entertain the flock rather than, uh, than get into true, uh, uh, the true Word of God. And that's where we get to chapter 10, the Humpty Dumpty dumbing down for a great fall. <laughs> As, again, a reference to the churches that are watering things down? Well, I think that's a part of it, yeah. But yeah. I mean, the whole culture is being, uh, you know, uh, watered down. Whether you look at it, you know, we talk about um, politically, uh, the whole world, the whole culture has been uh, uh, dumbed down to the point that they don't even understand the constitutional principles. Or, you know, they think it's some kind of organic uh, document as opposed to something the Founding Fathers set in a, a biblical um, a foundation. Uh, and so, but of course that, that's, that's on the political scale, but on the, um, on the scale of, uh, 
of the church and so forth. Well, well, yeah, we've been dumbed down to the point that uh, the gospel is no longer preached, and uh, uh, we've substituted it with a feel-good pablum. Fantastic thought, too, since we live in such an age of knowledge, and yet we're not as knowledgeable as we were about the Bible and other important things. That's right. Yeah. And then chapter 11, the Roman Empire strikes back. I love that title. <laughs> Well, I think we are seeing this happen. Uh, yeah. You know, I think we've seen it developing over the years from the time of the, what is the, the coal, um, the coal uh, community agreement in Europe years and years ago. And uh, uh -huh. since then, we've seen so much develop with the European Union. I do not believe that the Antichrist is going to come out of a, is going to come out of a, um, uh, some kind of a, uh, Muslim no. Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, form. But we see that we see his uh, base developing now, and, and it is uh, coming out of Central Europe, I think. And uh, we've seen so many, so much disruption there, so many, uh, uh, so many uh, uh, protests and everything else because of the failing economy. And economy is what's going to bring this guy to power ultimately. Mm -hmm. Well, chapter twelve: Who is that masked man on a white horse? Speaking, Who is that masked? <laughs> I thought he was a Lone Ranger. Yeah. Speaking of which, well, I start the chapter out by talking about uh, my and your childhood. And That's right. I used to come home from yeah. school and listen to Lone Ranger on radio every day. This wonderful old lady, this old German German couple, would invite me over and uh, <laughs> and and give me some homemade cookies and milk, and I'd watch the Lone Ranger and Old Tonto. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know he always he always uh, did good you know he can't well this guy's going to be just the opposite he's going to come on a white horse it says in Revelation chapter six verse uh, you know in the first part of uh, Revelation chapter six he's going to mm -hmm. come on a white horse and I guess he'll be wearing a white hat symbolically but he's going to be far from the Lone Ranger in his uh, way of dealing with people and it's all about the Antichrist the Antichrist. Development of Antichrist. Yeah. I use a lot of uh, a lot of quotes from people like uh, my dear friend Dave Brees, when you know my the late friend Dave Brees, and some others, um, in in, uh, in fleshing out this chapter. Well, chapter thirteen, a really strong cocktail called Israel, <laughs> and that is yeah. the biggie, you know. And now, I, where do you get the? Uh, why do you call it a cocktail? Yeah. Uh, Zechariah chapter 12, uh, you know, become a burdensome stone and all that, and, and a cup of trembling. Cup of, cup trembling. of trembling. Cup of Cocktail. trembling. To oh, that's the, clever. To the, whole, to the whole world. And that's what, that's what Jerusalem and Israel is becoming. God called Jerusalem the apple of his eye and, uh, and says anybody that tries to, uh, to uh, fool around with Israel and make them change uh, what God has planned for them is going to uh, be injured. But he also so says the whole world is going to come together against him in the end times. That's right. And he, we see that happening. We see developing every day. More Even more. America. Globalism yeah. on the rise. That will lead up to chapter 14, Armageddon lineup for the Super Bowl of War. Yeah, I have some great quotes in there from Dr. Fruchtenbaum and uh, from uh, John Walford and some others that really explain uh, the... Um, this lineup, the Super Bowl lineup for the last and final war, and of course that's all about Armageddon. I think we see all the nations gathering now. We see primarily the early stages of it. I see, think we see the Gog Magog um, uh, uh, things developing right now with Russia and, and Persia and some of the others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that's all a prelude to the ultimate war, which is going to be uh, Armageddon. And uh, again, all the players I think are being arranged on stage. God is not causing this, but He knew it from the from eternity past to the present. What was going to happen, and it's simply playing out according to uh, the script He allowed. And that leads up to the climax of the whole tribulation, right? Chapter 15, the greatest comeback of all time. Yeah, you know, we've had a lot of great comebacks. Remember Doug Flutie and his Hail Mary Pass. I, I mentioned that. <laughs> and Muhammad, the late Muhammad Ali, who's gone on to his reward. We, we remember that he was past his prime when he, um, he again uh, won the championship after uh, failing to go into the draft and so forth. And, uh, and so. Um, Talk about the greatest comeback. Well, there's going to be one great comeback that's going to be the greatest of all time. You know, they thought they had done away with Jesus uh, uh, when they crucified him, the mm -hmm. whole world. <laughs> Satan thought he'd done away with Jesus when he crucified him. No, he was playing into God's hand when he crucified him. And uh, he has promised to come back. It's the greatest promise of all time. Amen. And he's coming back, and he's coming back to rescue uh, uh, his church and to start a program with Israel. And I think that time is, uh, is very near. Now, of all those 15 chapters and 15 signs of the end times, which one do you think, uh, you mentioned convergence, of course, and if you want to say that, but is there a particular sign you think that has more power and more impact that shows that we're near the rapture than any of the others? 
Well, yeah, I think developments in Israel. I think David mentioned a while ago about Israel and, and the questions mm -hmm. he sent out and so forth. Well, I think Israel is definitely the number one signal of where we are on God's prophetic timeline. Um, so much is developed with, with everything centered on Jerusalem. I like to say that no matter which way the cameras turn, I mean, if they, if they come to the presidential elections here or some other uh, catastrophe in Haiti with the, earthquake, with the uh, hurricane or whatever, all the cameras turn right back to yeah. Jerusalem. And uh, with really Netanyahu at the center of it right now. And uh, so, uh, so God is continuing to focus on Israel. And uh, I think it's a number one signal where we are. This roadmap to peace thing that's been going on for so long and the hybrids of it, hybrid of it that's come out of it, I think it's a major uh, signal of where we are on God's prophetic timeline. Uh, Terry, I'd like to go back to something that you just mentioned in passing, and that is what do you think is going to be uh, the most widespread explanation of the rapture? I mean, the people are going to want to know what's happened. And so what, what's going to be an explanation of it? You know, I really think it's going to be a part of this, uh, this uh, Space Brother explanation. Uh, you know, part of, the, part of the New Age movement uh, that has developed over the years. And I think, uh, I think a UFO is going to be a big part of it. I really do. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on that, David? I'd like to know your thoughts well, on that because I, uh, I know you have some. Yes. Uh, my thought is that uh, back in the early 70s, the leaders of the New Age movement began to uh, write that uh, there is a time coming when those who are standing against the evolution of man and against humanism and the development of human potential are going to be taken off the earth. They say this has been revealed to them by their masters. Yeah, right. And will be taken off and those who believe in man and believe in the ultimate uh, uh, triumph of man will then be left to continue their evolutionary progress. I, I think that that's probably at the center of it. There's one other thing on that and you may not agree Dave I, and I still, I still very strongly believe it myself. I put it in the book. You know I believe that God's going to make a statement at that time of rapture about uh, the missing and that that is uh, he's going to he's going to tell the world when in his opinion uh, life begins in the womb. I think every child below the age of accountability is going to be gone. Now, I know there are a lot of argument against that. Mm -hmm. I, I would disagree with that argument. I believe that every child below the age of accountability in including those in the womb are going to be gone, gone at that moment and I believe God is going to make a statement right then. And besides that, uh, the rapture obviously making a statement, how does that then propel the Antichrist into power? Because you make that statement quite frequently throughout your book. Well, I, I, think, I think just the fact of the fear factor. I mean, they're going to accept, they're going to accept any answer, any answer they can find. Uh -huh. The worldwide chaos and people chaos. are going to be looking. You know, Jesus said, you know, at the time of, of um, in the days of Noah, days of Lot account, said that the very day that uh, they were taken out, uh, the people were taken out, and that's paralambano, that's a Greek term. I'm not a Greek scholar, but that's a Greek term for taken out. It's the same term that Jesus used in, uh, in uh, John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, when he said, uh, you know, I've come to receive you to myself. Paralambano is a Greek term that says they will be taken out. Unlike the, uh, unlike the, time, the term used, uh, uh, the flood that came and took them all away, that is kairanapanos. And that's a different, that's taken to judgment, but uh, paralambano means are taken uh, into uh, uh, the safety, and I think that's what's going to happen. On page 49 of your book, you say, and I quote, "My most profound hope for this book is that it be used to impress upon the spiritual dimension within each person who reads the exhortations written here that Jesus is on the very brink of calling His church." Yeah. You want to add anything to that? I don't, and Dave, I, you know, we haven't had time to go into in this uh, this particular thing, but there's a there's a special reason for that in my own life. I would have to, it'd be an entirely different program, another program to have to say it. But uh, I think God has imparted to me just how important this is and how close we are personally. Uh, I think uh, not not in the sense that He gave an Old Testament or New Testament prophet that. Uh, but uh, I, I just, something happened in my own life that I... I you died actually died, didn't you? Huh? You died. I, I, I had a, I had a, and I'm always reluctant because I, I've always been such a skeptic myself. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a real skeptic when it comes to these kind of things. Yeah, but I had a widow make a heart attack. And, uh, and I died three times clinically, 
So they had to bring me back with a paddle. I've got 50 pages of medical documentation. And it was so impressive to the doctors, my comeback, <laughs> talking about comeback, <laughs> but the, the, it was so impressive. They gave me the patient, the cardiac patient of the year award in my state. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it on a plaque. You can ask Todd. I've got it on well, we've a got about 50 seconds yeah. left in this segment. So what did God speak to you during that time? He just, I think it was not only for me. I saw this group of uh, young people. Uh, and I believe it was a cloud of witnesses of Hebrew 12, 1 through 3, 1 through 2, basically. And I believe he was, he was, they were cheering and they were welcoming into their midst. The third time we were running, third time, went, time I went back, we were running and uh, in a victory lap type thing. And, and I believe God was saying that I am, uh, I am very pleased with the fact that you are teaching Bible prophecy from the rapture, from the pre-trib view, and not, but not you only, but to all who teach and preach and believe that. And I'm coming back very soon. I believe they were cheering, not me, but God's promise. So he was encouraging you to come back and, and present and, this and message. And he was encouraging that Jesus is indeed coming back. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy. As we bring this program to an end, I want to thank Terry James again for being with us. Terry, you have been a blessing and thanks for coming. Well, thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate that so much. And how about telling people how to get in touch with your ministry? Well, RaptureReady.com. That's RaptureReady.com. I like that. I'm ready. I hope right. other people are as well. Well, folks, that's our program for this week. I hope it's been a blessing to you, and I hope, the Lord willing, that you'll be back with us again next week. Until then, this is Dave Reagan speaking for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying, look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. To secure a copy of Terry James' new book on the rapture, give us a call at the number you see on the screen. The book can be yours for a gift of $20 or more, including the cost of shipping. Call us Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Central Time, or place your order through our website at lamblion.com. The concept of a pre-tribulational rapture is under attack today as never before. The book presents solid evidence that the concept is biblically based. You might also want to order a copy of Dr. Reagan's latest video album titled, In Defense of the Pre-Trib Rapture. It runs an hour and a half in length, and in the video, Dr. Reagan responds to all the major arguments against the pre-trib rapture. He then conducts interviews with six Bible prophecy experts who also respond to the challenges to the pre-trib rapture. The people interviewed include Dr. Tommy Ice, the director of the Pre-Trib Research Center, Dr. Andy Woods, a pastor and theology professor, Dr. Mark Hitchcock, a pastor and prolific Bible prophecy author, Dr. William Watson, a biblical scholar, professor, and author. Dr. Charles Ryrie, the editor of the renowned Ryrie Study Bible. And Tim LaHaye, the co-author of the best-selling Left Behind series of books. This DVD video album can also be yours for a gift of $20 or more, including the cost of shipping. Or you can secure both the book by Terry James and the video by Dr. Reagan for a gift of $35 or more, including the cost of shipping. Just ask for offer number 742. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus.